fly, the fireplow. The fireplow is seen to be a Polynesian method of making fire, a welcoming fire, as I like to say. Now, it's mainly seen as Polynesian because that is where it has survived as a method within the indigenous population. But after experimenting and using the fireplow over the last few years and especially with my success over last year it is possible in other parts of the world and is possible in places like the UK so there is no reason to say that the fire plow wasn't used thousands of years ago within the more temperate environments who knows the fire plow is one of the simplest friction methods technology wise as you are simply rubbing a piece of wood against another piece of wood to welcome fire to try and coax the fire out to the fire plow but it is seen as one of the more difficult methods and a lot of people have a go but then give up um, so the, it is can be finickety and it's all about relearning and gaining the knowledge and learning from others and trial and error from my experience wood needs to be dead needs to be dry but not starting to go um, rotten starting to decay the punky even a little bit um, so I mainly collect my green or once it's uh, I find a relatively fresh fallen branch I never cut wood I always um, forage my wood from dead fallen wood um, and then I'll store it somewhere dry and airy to season it um, so in the UK I find dry season wood works best for the flower but I have three preferred um, wood species for the land in the UK my first is English lime, large leaf lime, small leaf lime, common lime um, from the Tilia genus. So that's the same as linden and basswood. Um, next is poplar from a poplar genus. Uh, not the same as tulip poplar, but I believe tulip poplar is fairly similar. So in the UK that's black poplar, which is a native one, which is very rare. So in the UK most poplars will either be a hybrid of um, the American Eastern Cottonwood and Black Poplar um, and then there's Lombardi Poplar um, and other varieties as well. Um, so be quite lucky if you get a native Black Poplar. The one I'm using I believe is a um, hybrid of Eastern Cottonwood and Black Poplar. And lastly is Ivy. Um, English ivy, which is a vine which grows on trees, um, which can grow very thick. Um, so that's my third choice. And I prefer using the blade and base from the same wood species, usually from the same piece of wood. Um, you know, you can carve from one piece of wood, you can carve your base and your blade. Um, but you can use different species as well and there are lots of different combinations so I'll list those um, within this video. Technique is important for a plough um, so I'll just go through, through a few pointers. When a lot of people first start learning a plough they'll adopt this position Now, some people might get that to work, but um, I find that very inefficient and difficult to apply pressure, and you soon get tired because it's all coming from your arms. So, the hand grip pipe is what I learnt from the um, Polynesians, so I call it po the Polynesian hand grip or the overhand hand grip. It's basically, yeah, put one hand over the top like that, the other hand over the top like that, and so pressing down like that. Pressure and speed is key because you know, in effect what you're doing with a fire plow is using by moving the stick up and down and pressing down hard you are heating up the wood and charring it and as you rub and down you are rubbing off the charred wood fibres and trying to get those to form into a pile and when you're also rubbing those fibres along the board you're heating them up rolling them along the board and heating them up and they're all forming in a pile that concentrated heat should hopefully ignite the fibres and create an 
Okay. So from my experience, my preferred posture, which works for me, might not work for everybody, is that I adopt a hand grip, then I kneel quite far back from the board. And then I'm using my weight, I'm pressing down onto that blade and I can shift my weight around if I want. So I'm pretty much leaning all my body weight onto it and then keeping that position moving it up and down so I'm not having to use my arms as much as it's my actual body weight which is pressing down to achieve a pressure so it's less tiring than if you adopt that method. Now the other important thing about the base is that you want it to be stable you don't want it moving around, the more it moves around the harder that it is to apply pressure. So if, it's long, if you've got a long piece of wood, you can like kneel on it while you're doing it, so your legs on it. If it's a shorter piece, get a big rock or get a big log like this and put it on top of a base, so that base is solid. So it's very important that your base is solid. Okay, so the blade. So. This may be down to personal preference, but for me, um, I prefer the shape. After experimentation, I prefer my shape uh, of the end of my blade to be oblong and to be uniform in length. Um, so with this one, that's the, I've carved that into a, an oblong and it's pretty much uniform and it is fairly straight. Um, this one, so that's a popular one, this one's lime. So this is one with the round lime branch. Um, I've not fully carved it, but as you can see at the end, I've made the end into a, an oblong. And this is ivy, again, the ivy. Ivy's a bit more difficult because ivy's very twisted, can be very twisted, so that's not quite perfect and it still needs um, straightening up a bit. But again, you can see I've tried to keep a oblong shape. So width. I personally prefer my width of my tip to be about 10 millimetres. If you have it too narrow, um, there's going to be less surface area and you can dig deeper into the wood too much. If it's too wide, then the opposite, you've got a lot more surface area, hard to supply downward pressure, maybe hard, hard, too hard to get enough friction on the tip. So, so we move my tips, I like them square on the end, if you can see, so rather than it being pointed, I have it square, square at the end so that it pushes the dust forward. Um, so you'll find with a pointed tip, you'll push the dust to the side, and you're on top of the dust being pushed forward into a pile. So now I'm going to start blowing. So, first of all, with your um, Base. I've got it nice and secure. I'm just going to shave the top off. Now what I'm going to do is instead of just pulling these top fibres off, I'm going to use them to form a stop. So I'm not going to shave these wood shavings totally off. I'm going to use those as a stop. So advantage of that is that you've got a stop to stop your review smashing through your wood pile um, it's a natural stop so if you go too far you'll stop and you've got somewhere that will to stop the, the dust to collect the dust but you might also want to as well as that just dig a little hole before it a little indent you don't have to but that's quite handy put a new tip on the other end of my blade just so you can see how I do it. So I'm going to carve opposite sides flat <laughs> trying to keep it, have it straight So why you need a straight blade is that so you're ploughing and moving up and down in a straight line. So you're creating a straight line. 
Um, and you want it parallel and uniform so that you have a parallel groove. If it's wide in one part, you might find your groove is thin and widens out and then you'll also, and as you get deeper, you'll find that your blade, uh, the wider part of your blade will get stuck. Um, you don't want to get, with a plough, you don't want to get deep, really. As soon as you start getting deep into wood, you want to stop and carve the sides away. Because when you get deep, you've got the friction on the sides as well as the bottom. So you want to focus all that friction on the bottom of a groove. So, there you can see we've got sort of a square end, squarish end. That's probably about, I know, maybe just over a centimetre. We'll see how we go with this. With some woods like lime, it's quite soft. So it's probably better to start with a thicker um, tip rather than thinner because when it's thicker you can easily Got thin it new out. new base, we'll stop at the end. I've got my hand grip and I'm kneeling back as you saw earlier. I will zoom out in a bit. Right, so what I'm going to do, to start starting off a new groove can be quite tricky. You need to apply pressure, you know, it's easy to start a little bit at a time. As you hear it start to burn it, you can then widen. And lengthen your stroke. Right, I'll just stop there. Right, so kneeling back, leaning forward, leaning my body weight on, and then pushing blade forward, pulling it back, pushing it forward, pulling it back. Now that's probably about seven or eight centimetres. Now if you do it, if it short, strokes are too short, you're constantly stopping and starting all the time so you won't get enough friction really. If you have it too long then again you've got the opposite and the groove beat could be too too long. Um, so this is my natural um, stroke length so and I find that works pretty well. So then I'm pressing down let's start speeding up. Low angle Increase the angle. <coughs> Give a little tap. Jiggle the ember. There we go. There she goes. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, you astral fire. 